Every single day, refineries around the world transform 100 million barrels of crude oil into the fuels that power our cars, heat our homes, and create thousands of everyday products. That's enough to fill over 6,300 Olympic swimming pools with gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, and other petroleum products daily. But how does thick black crude oil become the clear gasoline in your car or the jet fuel powering a jumbo jet? From massive distillation towers to molecular level catalytic cracking, this is how the world's most valuable commodity is processed every day in the largest industrial facilities on earth. The journey from crude oil to refined petroleum products is a marvel of modern engineering that's been perfected over the past century. What comes out of the ground isn't what goes into your gas tank. It's a complex transformation process that takes raw crude and turns it into hundreds of different products that touch nearly every aspect of modern life. Today, we're going behind the scenes of the world's most important industrial process to see exactly how it happens. The Origin of Petroleum Refining Long before the first oil well was drilled in Pennsylvania in 1859, Petroleum had already made its mark on human history. Ancient civilizations in Mesopotamia used naturally occurring asphalt to waterproof boats and buildings. The Chinese drilled for oil using bamboo poles as early as 347 AD, using it primarily for lighting and medicine. But the modern petroleum industry truly began when Colonel Edwin Drake drilled the first successful oil well in Titusville, Pennsylvania. At just 69 feet deep, this well sparked what would become the world's most valuable industry. Early refineries were simple operations that separated crude oil into just a few products, primarily kerosene for lamps, with gasoline often discarded as a useless byproduct. Everything changed when Henry Ford's Model T made automobiles affordable for the average American in the early 1900s. Suddenly, gasoline wasn't a waste product. It was liquid gold. Refineries quickly adapted, developing new processes to produce more gasoline from each barrel of crude. This shift fundamentally transformed the petroleum industry and set the stage for modern refining techniques. Today's refineries are a far cry from those early operations. They're massive industrial complexes covering hundreds of acres, processing hundreds of thousands of barrels daily, and employing sophisticated technologies that would have seemed like science fiction to Colonel Drake and his contemporaries. From well to refinery, the journey begins before any refining can begin. Crude oil must make its epic journey from deep underground to the refinery gate. This begins at oil fields, where wells extract crude oil from deposits that formed millions of years ago from the remains of ancient marine organisms. Under intense heat and pressure over geological timescales, these organic materials transformed into the hydrocarbons we know as petroleum. Once extracted, crude oil travels through a vast network of pipelines, ships, trains, and trucks. The United States alone has over 190,000 miles of petroleum transmission pipelines, enough to circle the Earth more than seven times. Massive oil tankers, some larger than four football fields, transport crude across oceans. A single supertanker can carry up to 2 million barrels of crude oil, enough to fill your car's gas tank about 2 million times. When crude oil arrives at the refinery, it's first tested to determine its specific properties. Not all crude oil is created equal. It varies dramatically in density, sulfur content, and the mix of hydrocarbons it contains. Light, sweet crude contains more of the valuable components that make gasoline and diesel, while heavy, sour crude requires more intensive processing. The specific recipe of crude oil dictates exactly how the refining process will unfold. Refineries are carefully calibrated to handle specific types of crude, which is why unexpected changes in the global oil supply can cause significant disruptions in the refining industry. Distillation. The first critical step. The refining process begins with what's essentially a massive distillation operation, separating crude oil into different components based on their boiling points. This occurs in the tallest and most recognizable structures at any refinery, the distillation columns. The process starts by heating crude oil in a furnace to temperatures around 750 degrees Fahrenheit, turning much of it into vapor. 
This superheated mixture then enters the atmospheric distillation tower, a column that can reach heights of 150 feet, about half the length of a football field. Inside this tower, temperature decreases as height increases, creating different temperature zones. As the vaporized oil rises through the tower, different components condense at different heights based on their boiling points. The lightest components, like gases and naphtha, used to make gasoline, condense near the top where temperatures are coolest. Midweight components, like kerosene and diesel fuel, condense in the middle sections. The heaviest components, which never vaporized at all, collect at the bottom. This initial separation is critical, but it's just the beginning of the refining process. While distillation effectively sorts the hydrocarbons by size, many of these components aren't yet suitable for their intended uses. The heavier fractions are particularly problematic. There's simply not enough natural demand for these products compared to how much is produced. Conversion processes, breaking down and building up. After initial distillation, refineries face a fundamental challenge. The natural yield from distillation doesn't match market demand. While about 40% of a barrel might naturally become heavy fuel oil through distillation alone, the market demand for heavy fuel oil is far less than that. Meanwhile, gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel are in much higher demand than their natural yield. This mismatch is solved through conversion processes, sophisticated chemical reactions that transform heavier hydrocarbons into lighter, more valuable products. The most important of these is catalytic cracking, a process that literally breaks large hydrocarbon molecules into smaller ones. In a fluid catalytic cracking, FCC, unit, Heavy gas oil from the distillation process is heated to about 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit and mixed with a powdered catalyst, typically zeolite, a porous material that facilitates the cracking reaction. As the oil contacts the catalyst, the large hydrocarbon chains break apart into smaller molecules that can be used to make gasoline and other valuable products. The FCC unit is an engineering marvel a continuous process where the catalyst circulates between the reaction chamber and a regenerator, where carbon deposits are burned off to restore the catalyst's activity. A single FCC unit can process tens of thousands of barrels per day, dramatically increasing a refinery's gasoline yield. Other conversion processes include hydrocracking, similar to catalytic cracking but uses hydrogen and different catalysts to produce more diesel and jet fuel, coking, an extreme thermal process that breaks down the heaviest fractions into lighter products and petroleum coke. Alkylation combines small hydrocarbon molecules into larger high-octane components for premium gasoline. These conversion units represent some of the most complex and expensive equipment in a refinery, but they're essential for maximizing the value of each barrel of crude oil. Treatment Removing Impurities Crude oil naturally contains impurities that must be removed to meet strict environmental regulations and product specifications. The most problematic of these is sulfur, which causes air pollution when burned and can damage refinery equipment. Hydrotreatment is the primary method for removing sulfur. In hydrotreating units, hydrogen gas is combined with petroleum fractions under high pressure and temperature in the presence of a catalyst. The hydrogen reacts with sulfur compounds, converting them to hydrogen sulfide gas that can be separated and processed. Modern ultra-low sulfur diesel and gasoline contain less than 15 parts per million of sulfur, a dramatic reduction from the 5,000 plus ppm common decades ago. This transformation has required massive investments in hydrotreatment capacity with some refineries dedicating up to 25% of their total processing capacity to sulfur removal. Other treatment processes remove nitrogen compounds, metals, and other contaminants that would otherwise reduce product quality or contribute to pollution. These treatment steps are increasingly important as refineries process heavier, more contaminated crude oils while facing stricter environmental regulations. Blending Creating the final products. The final step in refining is blending, mixing various components to create finished products with precise specifications. Modern gasoline, for example, 
isn't a single substance, but a carefully formulated blend of five to 10 different components. Refineries use sophisticated blending systems to combine streams from various processing units into final products. These systems consider dozens of properties, octane rating, vapor pressure, sulfur content, and seasonal requirements to ensure each batch meets exact specifications. Gasoline blending is particularly complex. Base components are mixed with additives that enhance performance, reduce emissions, and prevent engine deposits. Different grades of gasoline, regular, mid-grade, premium, contain varying amounts of high-octane components. Regional and seasonal variations add further complexity. Summer gasoline in Phoenix has different properties than winter gasoline in Chicago. Sophisticated online analyzers continuously monitor the properties of blended products, with automated systems adjusting the blend recipe in real time to maintain specifications. A modern refinery might produce dozens of different formulations simultaneously, each tailored to specific markets and regulations. The Modern Refinery A Marvel of Integration Today's refineries are marvels of integration and efficiency, where heat, energy, and intermediate products are constantly exchanged between units to maximize efficiency. Nothing goes to waste. Even refinery gases produced in various processes are captured and used as fuel for the refinery's furnaces and boilers. A typical complex refinery can transform a barrel of crude oil into approximately 19 to 20 gallons of gasoline, 11 to 12 gallons of diesel and heating oil, 4 gallons of jet fuel, 6 to 8 gallons of other products, lubricants, asphalt, petrochemical feedstocks. The economics of refining are driven by the crack spread, the difference between crude oil prices and the value of refined products. Refineries operate on relatively thin margins, typically earning just a few dollars per barrel processed. This drives relentless pursuit of efficiency and optimization. The most sophisticated refineries can process over 600,000 barrels of crude oil daily, enough to fill about 25 million car tanks per month. These facilities represent investments of billions of dollars and employ thousands of highly skilled workers to keep operations running 24-7, 365. Beyond Fuels, the Petrochemical Connection While fuels remain the primary output of refineries, an increasing portion of petroleum is used to produce petrochemicals, the building blocks for thousands of everyday products. Modern refineries are often integrated with petrochemical facilities that transform refinery outputs into materials for plastics, synthetic fibers, medicines, and countless other products. Naphtha and other light distillates from the refining process are particularly valuable as petrochemical feedstocks. Through processes like steam cracking, these materials are converted into ethylene, propylene, and other basic chemicals that form the foundation of the petrochemical industry. From the smartphone in your pocket to the synthetic fibers in your clothes, petroleum-derived materials are ubiquitous in modern life. The average American car contains about 400 pounds of plastics and composites derived from petroleum reducing weight, and improving fuel efficiency compared to metal alternatives. Thank you for tuning in. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution.